Welcome back to Collecting Cars and today we're driving this recently consigned Austin Healey 100M race car. In 1952, Donald Healey built a single Healey 100 for the London Motor Show. The design impressed the managing director of Austin so much that a deal was struck to join forces and build a car together. And in doing so, the Austin Healey 100 was born. It's said that the 100 in the name was given to the car for its ability to reach 100 miles an hour. This specific car has been a race car since the 1960s. Its history file details a rebuild by Dennis Welsh Motorsport in the 1980s and it has had FIA HTP papers since 1986. It also comes with brand new FIA HTP papers for the 100M class car. The Historical Technical Passport, or HTP, serves two purposes. Firstly, for use of technical and eligibility officials at competitions, and secondly, for the use of competition organisers in both classification and class structure for their competitions. The present owner has had the car for the last three and a half years, and in that time, the car has been maintained and run by Woolmer Classic Engineering. The 100 is special because it's the first time that we saw these two great names, Austin and Healey, together on the front of a car. And what they made was the Austin Healey 100. And this is an Austin Healey 100M, so it's the Austin Healey 100, but the M spec was the racing version of that. So this is a very special car and has some really cool features for us to have a look at. First and foremost, just the pure profile of it, because you don't have any windshield, you just have these tiny little pieces of glass sitting there and actually some of them had a raked back windscreen but when they're in race spec like this quite a lot of them are taken off and you just have this little wind deflector here. Under the hood is a 2.6 litre engine which has been tweaked and we'll look at that in a minute but one of the things that I absolutely love on the bonnet is these louves which has just been punched into the bonnet there and then we've got this gorgeous leather strap for easy access to open up the engine compartment and you can just throw that over there pull the pin and open her up. It is as simple as that. And that's ideal when you're out racing because it means that the team and the mechanics can access the engine very, very quickly. Under that gorgeous bonnet is a 2.6 litre engine producing about 110 horsepower. But because the car is so light, it has a fantastic power to weight ratio, which gives it real oomph. So front engines, as we said, we've got the fuel tank in the back. Take a look at that in a minute. Lovely wire wheels and disc brakes. And then down the side of the car, we've got these lovely memories of where the car's been and what it's been up to. So we've got the Mille Emilia sticker there, the BARC sticker on the side, and obviously a spa one there. Fantastic. Below the decals is the exhaust pipe, and that's not a rear exit, it's side exit, quite cool. And then another cool thing just on these tires actually to note, you've got the chalk markings left rear and then at the front here right front rf so we've got real authenticity that this car has actually been out and raced because that's what they do obviously when they take the tires off label them up like that so when they change them over they know what's what half tonneau on the car at the moment you can take that off if you're going out with a buddy or, or whatever but that's ideal when it's just you in the car then round the back take my sunglasses off couple of things to to note we've got again the leather boot straps here tow bar underneath FIA rear light you can come and take a closer look at this because this is where your fuel tank sits in the back here very simple but what's really quite nice this current owner has just got a little wooden dipstick there which you can sort of plunge into the fuel tank and sort of measure how much fuel's left. And there's little notches just on the bottom there so you can see whether you've got sort of five, 10 or 20 liters of fuel left. Nice and simple. Now to get in, you've had to climb over this roll bar which is down to your right hand side and that comes right up over your shoulder and we've got this hoop behind us there. You can actually also affix the same hoop over on this passenger side, but quite frankly, when you're driving or racing, you've got the half tonneau covered there, but I've just taken this out so you can see the rest of the display panels in here. In front of you, leather stitch steering wheel, motor liter, very period for this sort of car. Um, Smith's gauges, which most Austin Healy's have. Water and oil pressure to your left, speedometer just stuck there to the right of that. And then we've got this twisted clockwise rev counter just so that you can see the higher rev range. Indicator lights, oil pressure light, and the ignition light. So we've got this green, amber, and red lights just dead ahead. 
indicators are on a toggle on this and then we've got a couple of other things the ignition switch simple on and off we've got this lovely sticker which shows you which way around that works and then this big red toggle to the left is the fuel kill switch so when you stop the car and turn the ignition off you also need to turn that towards you to turn the fuel off as well so when we do the startup procedure you'll, you'll see that i'll turn the ignition on to the right and then flip that up to the left very simple in here as you expect not much else to talk about massive fire extinguisher under here in the passenger seat well that can be grabbed out quite simply then we've got this lucky number seven pool ball style gear knob lots of people have their sort of lucky eight ball but this is a red number seven it's very cool and actually fits in the hand very nicely for the gear changes four speed manual reverse far over to the left and down and then your usual h pattern right i'll strap myself into the three point trs safety harness fire her up and we'll go for a little drive right startup procedure ignition on fuel on let that run foot on the clutch i'm actually already in first i've gone second pushed into first hit this now look at this when you actually put your foot on the throttle a little bit you can feel the car shake from side to side and away we go now these buckets are quite low so you're sort of peering over the top of the visor there but that's not a problem on a day like today you can't beat being in a car like this you really can't wind in your hair engine popping and banging away down a country road beautiful and you can feel how taut the car is it really really wants to go you don't actually have that much weight at the back you've got that fuel tank but really all the weight is at the front so if you're a bit too lively around some of these corners you could soon know about it oh it rattles you about the tyres on this really pick up every undulation in the road so you've got to have your wits about you and both hands on the steering wheel because otherwise it sort of pulls you out of or into should I say you end up sort of in a rut and pulling off to the right or the left what a collaboration this is you're so engaged because you're thrown all over the road you're really bobbling around but I imagine this would feel super super planted on a racetrack but out on the country roads you don't half feel it but it's a good thing because you're driving imagine thrashing this round Goodwood in the Woodcut Trophy or the Sterling Moss Trophy two races of which I think this is actually eligible that would be fantastic you have to really hone your skills with a car like this to get those precision starts and you can't be ginger with it you need to let the clutch out find your grip and just go for it I'm driving pretty slowly on these roads as I don't know the car so much and don't know the road so well here but on a track you've got to find your limits that's really the only way to improve your driving in a car like this just keep pushing find where the limit of your grip is in the car this 100m is a class act its eligibility for things like goodwood and the le mans classic make it even more attractive so whether you're looking for a car to race on track or go on a tour go and check this out on collectingcars.com and see the full listing thanks for watching please like and subscribe for more videos like this and see you soon